Hello and welcome to this brief video in which we will examine the Log4j vulnerability, and how Acunox can defend against it. Attackers can easily gain shell access after successfully exploiting the vulnerability, giving them complete control over the compromised server. Log4j is an open source logging utility by the Apache Software Foundation, for logging services. It sheds light on what might have gone wrong of a Java-based application. Log4j supports JNDI Lookup which is Java naming and directory interface. This vulnerability exploits the JNDI lookup functionality. An attacker can trick the vulnerable server to a malicious lookup server, which then delivers a remote command to the vulnerable server, instead of serving a directory resource. On a sample application, we will demonstrate how to exploit the log4j vulnerability. Let's deploy a simple Java application in Kubernetes. Wait for the application to fully deploy. Ensure that the pod and services are operational. We now have the application's external IP. Verify that the sample application is up and running. We switch to the attacker's environment to perform the exploitation. To exploit the vulnerability, the attacker launches a malicious LDAP server. Let's load an LDAP server on the attacker's machine. It also has a web server running on port 8000. Wait for it to be successfully deployed. It has now been successfully deployed. Next we execute into the pod and start the server. Before we can take complete control of the vulnerable server, we must first ensure that a listener is running on the attacker server, which I will accomplish with a simple netcat listener. Now I'll start the listener. The hacker's payload causes a LDAP lookup from the vulnerable server to the malicious LDAP server. The malicious LDAP server then delivers the command payload to the vulnerable app. The hacker's HTTP server delivers the command as a Java class. Let's use the username field to send a payload to a vulnerable server. A shell is created on the hacker server the moment a command is issued to the vulnerable server. I'll use hostname to verify that the shell is from the vulnerable server. We not only get a shell, but we also get the most privileged user account, root. Using this high privilege access, one can run any command on the server or scan connected network devices, and the possibilities are truly limitless. We will create a network policy and see how you can protect against such vulnerabilities. This policy restricts outgoing connections to LDAP and RMI ports. Select policy type egress. Select cluster and namespace. The selector labels are based on the Kubernetes label selector. The policy only applies to endpoints with those labels. Let me now add rules to the policy. First, we'll add all four to ports rules. It restricts the ability of an endpoint. In our case it's Java microservice pod, to emit packets on a particular port using a particular protocol. We are adding egress deny rules. These rules will prevent traffic to world using any protocols on LDAP and RMI ports. A single policy can contain a number of rules. Once rules are added, policy will go to pending state. You must obtain approval before applying policy on the cluster. Once the policy is applied, the status in the All Policies screen changes to active. We will try to exploit the vulnerability again after we have applied the policy. Please ensure that two things are in place on the attacker's machine. First, a malicious LDAP server is in operation. Second, the attacker is awaiting a reverse shell connection. After these two prerequisites are met, the attacker sends a payload to the vulnerable application. 
checks netcat listener on the attacker's machine after sending the payload. As you can see, before applying the policy, we received a reverse shell connection on the attacker's machine as soon as the payload was sent. This time, the attacker did not obtain a shell connection. Aconox successfully protected the workload against the Log4j vulnerability. You will be protected against such vulnerabilities if you use Aconox's network and system security policies. You can apply these policies at runtime, and workloads will continue to run normally, only policy violations will be blocked. The logs summary lists all log events that have occurred within your workloads. Alerts will be raised for each policy violation. I'm filtering logs so that only logs from my Java application show up. The logs showing that critical policy violation events occurred. Examine the event using the log detail panel. This policy prevented the Java application from making outgoing connections to port 1389. You can see how many times it attempted to connect. Aconox can safeguard your workloads against such threats. The application is now running with Aconox protection.